Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 22 series, episode 14. Here's the Pittsburgh Pirates and we're here at the end of the 2023 season and uh, it honestly went pretty much downhill after the trade deadline where I mentioned uh, we of course got rid of a decent amount of the guys who contributed to the success of the team but we struggled pretty badly. Uh, as expected, we fell off a good bit, of course. Uh, when I left off, we were pretty much right uh, behind the Brewers. Uh, we ended up being a few games back by the deadline. We were neck and neck previously to that. And we ended up finishing uh, 26 games at back of the division, way down in the wild card race. We should be looking at a top 10 pick this coming upcoming season, so that is something that we will have to look forward to. As for uh, expected win-loss, we... Um, we're pretty close to what we were. Um, of course, we downgraded a bit record-wise since the last season, but um, there's only a swing of a few games. I'm not too, too concerned about that. I mean, we had the pieces to be a better team, and then we ended up, you know, just selling them away because it ended up being the, the right decision for us. Team-wise, um, a lot of our poor success, I guess you could say, this season was definitely due to our offense. I mean, we were 14th of run scored. Um, pretty much last and pretty much every power metric still pretty decent um, base running uh, our pitching was relatively good um, the league seventh in pitching war sixth in FIP and uh, we'll take that our defense was also not awesome um, for kind of the first time so far in this series so and that's something that we probably should improve on if we are going to have success in the future but all in all I think you know, it was a pretty successful season. Got a lot of uh, improved play from a lot of guys who um, I was, you know, eyeing up to have good performances. So those guys did well. All the guys that, um, you know, I thought that maybe wouldn't have good seasons um, were the ones who ended up performing poorly. First, we're going to go ahead and look at the guys on the injured list. I believe Josh Hartlieb and JT Brubaker might have been hurt um, the last time in the last update. I don't quite remember, but if uh, I didn't go over that or if they weren't hurt yet, um, JT Brubaker has to get micro fracture, fracture surgery on his knee, so he's done um, most likely for a good chunk of next year as well. And then Jeff Hartley uh, just strained his hamstring, so he'll be down for about a month. And then kind of recapping the year's performances, I'm not too, too. Um, and then looking at recapping, this year's performances will kind of go how I usually do it, just go through by position groups. Of course, we don't have the second um, in the catching tandem um, with no Jacob Stallings now. Um, Wordbet kind of had a um, poor-ish season. Um, he performed a lot poorly, more poorly than last season. WRC Plus was only at 77. So I definitely want to see him perform better with the bat, especially since he is not nearly as good um, in the field. Nito was, I mean, awful with the bat. I mean, I didn't really expect him to do much. Um, he pretty much is here just for defensive purposes. So, not yeah, too much there. Um, and also, another reason why I think um, we were so low in run production is because um, something that I didn't even really notice throughout the year. Um, you know, we weren't looking to, or I mean, I wasn't looking to contend necessarily this year, of course, especially after the deadline. Um, I I didn't pay I didn't pay too too much attention you know to um kind of what the computer was doing I was paying a little bit of attention but uh, first base was a situation I wasn't really looking at and uh, Luke and Baker actually was in platoon with Co pretty much the entire year um now he does have pretty good ratings against left-handed uh, pitching don't get me wrong um but he really struggled I mean 183 248 um of course he was our Rule Five pick this past year. I mean, he was absolutely terrible at the bat. Of course, he's a first baseman. He's not particularly good defensive at first baseman either. So, um, I mean, he was just a pretty bad player for us all around. I mean, he struck out a lot. So, Co only got 116 starts on the year, which is, um, you know, definitely not what I would want to see. Um, in that time, he did actually hit 31 home runs, um, which... Um, topped his total from the last year, so it was definitely a good thing to see from him. His ratings went up, which is also very good to see. Um, it was honestly, uh, all in all, just a great season for him. He did get hurt at the end of the season here, uh, literally the last day. So, um, you know, he he didn't get hurt at all, but he also didn't um, 
don't receive the full playing time that he should have, definitely. But um, I'm definitely very pleased with that season. Hopefully he can turn in more seasons like that. I'd be interested. Uh, okay, so it doesn't look like he's interested in talking an extension yet, but um, definitely be interested in bringing him back um, because he just is uh, that good with the bat, especially um, it'd be good to see if he can turn in uh, another season like the one that he just had. Um, next, Admin. I've kind of went over him all season. He just um, was pretty poor. I don't think I'm going to bring him back. It would take probably another $2 million deal. I just think I would rather find someone else. Um, if I had to bring him back, I probably would. But, I mean, he's a poor defensive second baseman. He should be. I'm kind of a bat first second base guy who can get on base. And he just wasn't that all year. Uh, as you can see, it actually just kind of punted on Admin. Just forced Cole Tucker to play second base. Um partially so he could expand his versatility he just happened to not really play second base at all so the second base uh, rating is really low compared to all of his other defensive ratings so I decided to play him there and um, I mean he wasn't particularly good with the bat either he actually um, was a bit worse with the bat um, than Adamant I don't think he was when I started forcing him to play second base but you know I figured why not so uh, yeah Cole Tucker had a pretty poor season I'm actually going to go ahead and unset his game strategy there um, because there's no need to do that since we're out of the season. I'll also set his position back to shortstop so his rating goes back up. And then uh, I actually uh, ended up bringing up O'Neill Cruz. Cabrian Hayes got a little banged up at the end of the season and uh, his performance started to dip. He actually was hitting uh, much better. By the uh, by the end of the season, he was hitting uh, above 300 than his uh his stats started to dip a bit, and I, you know, didn't want to fool around with him. I'm getting a long, uh, a bad long-term injury, so I just put him right in the IL. That's why he only uh, played about 140 games this season. And then I called up O'Neill Cruz, who actually didn't get a ton of playing time there. I had to force him there. Cole Tucker actually got a lot of those uh, third-base ABs um, when Hayes was down. He was out for about uh, a week or two, so um, not too long. But uh, again, O'Neill Cruz get, uh, did get those at bats. He actually performed pretty well with them. I'm kind of right now the thought that O'Neill Cruz is just a guy who kind of needs to go. I mean, you know, we tried to play him in right field, and his right field rating is fine. I mean, he's 50 position rating. Um, his range is decent, actually better than field range. But uh, his outfield air and arm just aren't as good as his infield. And for his ratings to even really be decent. Um, he, he just needs to be a third baseman. Of course, we have Cabrian Hayes, who, you know, is awesome and uh, someone who, you know, I want to have for the long term. So, O'Neill Cruz um, probably needs to be dealt this offseason, unfortunately. I mean, he's 25. He's, he's kind of moving out of prospect status. So, he's just someone who I think we need to move on from um, at this point because we just don't have any room for him on the roster. You know, I tried to fit him in the right field, but um, unfortunately, that just really isn't uh, working out. And then uh, speaking of Hayes, um, you know, he was another pretty solid season from him. Um, 280s average, um, OVP in the 363, um, his highest of his career. I um, would like him hit for a little bit more power, but of course, uh, he had, he had a, a back injury, I think, when he got hurt. So I guess that would uh, take a lot of uh, his power away. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's still a good season from him. Uh, played the least amount of games uh, so far. Usually he plays like pretty much every game for us. I'm um, not this year, but um, still a fantastic season for him. I'd be looking to extend him long term, and it looks like he actually is interested in uh, being extended long term. Um, Fifteen million would be an absolute steal um, for him, especially in his post uh, arbitration years. I think I actually would be interested in doing something like this. Um, maybe not, you know, um, having uh, you know fifteen million during his arbitration years, but I would be interested. You know, if, if we could get him for below twenty million a season, I think that would be an absolute steal. He's going to be um, going into his first year of arbitration this year, which most likely could be in the ten million dollar range, um, or even uh, probably not quite ten for his first one, but definitely would be over ten um, in his next few. So, I think it'd be pretty interesting uh, or a pretty good thing to get him on a. Uh, a good deal here. I don't know why I was going minus there. Um, I I kind of played around with the idea because I knew um, that he won an extension earlier in the year, and uh, this is kind of um, what his demand shifted to um, after that. So I think 
um, maybe we could do something like this. I'd be definitely comfortable. 10 um, this next year, and then 15, of course. Um, his salary might not be 10 this year, um, but, you know, if I think we could get a deal like this done, even we'll go one more up here, see what he says about it, and he says it's a fair offer, so hopefully he accepts that. That would be a pretty, pretty good uh, deal for us. Um, you know, a star player, a great defensive player, um, and get him for pretty cheap, so hopefully he gets back to us, and then uh, in the next episode I'll let you know um, you know what he has to say about that contract extension, uh, as you know, we're only here at the end of the regular season. And moving on, Estrada, who we picked up on waivers, he initially had a pretty nice start to the season, um, but fills it out pretty quickly. Um, 258, 304, 373. Um, so he was much better than he was with New York, um, and, and I guess he was even, um, you know, not really not that poor. I mean, 83 OPS plus. Um, you know, he, he he's a better replacement level player. Um, and he doesn't even play good shortstop defense. I mean, he was actually pretty poor in the 84 games. He's, as you can see from his ratings, he's really not a guy who he should really be playing at shortstop. But he really wasn't that good. We just kind of put him out there. Now, Almeas couldn't hit at all in uh, the minor leagues this year, and we just didn't really have any other options. No one better um, came along on waivers, so so I had to write it out with him. Um, up the middle is something that we're definitely going to need to upgrade long term. Um, even uh, in the minor leagues with all of our prospects, all of them are pretty much uh, quarter infielders, uh, cat or I should really say catchers, um, catchers that we're most likely going to turn into corner infielders or corner outfielders because of their um, low catching ratings. Um, outfielders, uh, we we don't have anyone up the middle long term, so um, that's probably a position that we um, will probably have to rotate in and out a lot of, um, which you know is something that you really don't want to do. Um, honestly, probably most likely try to go for a defensive-minded guy up the middle um, since we really, um, you know, probably shouldn't be investing a lot of our money to that, especially if uh, a lot of our prospects coming up that we will want to um, keep around. So it might be a revolving door there at this position, at least for now, especially when we're not trying to necessarily compete uh, right now. So... And then looking kind of uh, towards the outfield then, um, Andrew McCutcheon uh, was decent enough in his um, return to Pittsburgh. Uh, he was performing a little better. He pretty much uh, started um, in a platoon against left-handed pitching. Um, 242, 322, and 346. Um, you know, not the greatest line. Um, his outfield defensive ratings actually went down a ton. He's a guy who can't really play the outfield at all. He was hitting ratings went down a good bit. I mean, his ratings declined. Uh, it was more of a, you know, get him because it'd be nice to see him back in a Pittsburgh uniform. And that's what we did. He doesn't really even want to resign with us if we even did want to bring him back next year. So um, his time in Pittsburgh uh, most likely will be done. And I don't really think uh, that uh, it'd be a good option to bring him back because we do have guys in the minor leagues who I'd want to give the bench bat spots in the outfield too. So... Uh, but it was nice again to see him in a Pittsburgh uniform this season. Brian Reynolds said probably what was his best season to date as a uh, pirate in this uh, save at least. He hit 283, 351, and 426. Um, he, I mean, that's just the best offensive season he had um, the entire time we've been in this series. He was about a three win player. He branched out a little bit uh, more positionally, uh, played a little bit of center. Played a good amount of right field against lefties um, because of how much Bauer struggled. But yeah, Re Reynolds was a good player for us this year. Um, I'm not quite sure what we would want in the future. Uh, he's interested in extending, um, but uh, I'm not quite sure if I would want to honestly pay him uh, quite that much. Because, you know, again, we, we do have a, a bunch of outfielders coming up in the system soon. Um, so, and uh, with his uh, lack of positional versatility, I'd probably um, rather... Um, you know, get someone else. But Reynolds is a, a good player. Um, but he again could be moved in the next uh, few seasons with the prospects we have coming up. Travis Swaggerty, he was, uh, our, pretty much our main bench outfielder for the entire year. Um, he's a lefty who can play center field. He actually had a pretty decent uh, season: two fifty four, three thirty six, and four oh four. Um, he was above average uh, league hitter. Um, you know, he he was mainly a pinch hitter uh, for us. He was. 
pretty much the main um, one of the main pinch hitters against righty. He's got about 200 plate appearances. Um, didn't start much, but I was pretty happy with his performance. Uh, he's a decent. Op- I mean, he's got good range, and decent discipline, good power to the gap. Um, pretty much perfect player um, for this park, and uh, perfect ratings would be a fourth outfielder. I'm a PNC park. Carlos Tochi, who uh, again I've mentioned all season. Um, had a great season as a contact bat for us. I mean, 289, 337 um, on base. Um, didn't hit for much power at all. Um, was only an 84 um, WRC plus, but he's a decent player. Um, he's was pretty useful. He's uh, pretty good in center field, which is definitely nice to see. Um, he played center field a bunch for us this season. And, of course, with uh, those lackluster power numbers, he really um, isn't going to be that impactful of a hitter. But he was a fine little player for us. You know, we got him off waivers to fill a need that we had in center field, and he fit that job pretty well. We'll probably bring him back next season just because um, his he'll, he'll be worth it to have on the roster again for as low of a salary as he'll be making. He's pretty good. Um, in center, we also um, don't have many right-handed outfielders in our system, so he, he's a guy who... Uh, could be useful as to the future. And then Jake Bowers, he had a very down season compared to what he usually does. Uh, he only had a wOBA of 291 under 300. Um, he didn't slug at all. 350s only had eight homers, and he 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 definitely lost some um, playing time. Uh, last season, of course, he was hurt, so he didn't get uh, necessarily the full season. But this season, he was he was pretty rough. Um, I don't really know where we're going to stand with him going forward, but definitely we'll be open to having um, some more guys, um, get some more guys in maybe. Um, we'll bring in a, a veteran outfielder. Um, we'll, we'll have a spot open with uh, McCutcheon not coming back. So it um, definitely could be possible that we um, find someone to replace him uh, with because of that poor season. Now moving on to pitching, which uh, probably had the most uh, shakeups throughout the season. Um, lots of moving, shaking, lots of guys going up and down, as of course uh, that usually is the case with pitching. Um, so we're just going to go um, kind of performance-wise, starting with the worst guys at the top and then getting down to everyone else. Reggie Lawson is, of course, who we acquired for Zach Eflin, and he was not very good with us. Um, a fifth of about five, ERA was way sky high. Um, he walked a ton of people, didn't really strike out many people. Um had a super high up against pretty much an unlucky season. I would expect him to do this poorly again. I but he, I think he should be fine. He's a guy who I think could have a about a low four, fifth, high three. He, he could be an effective reliever for us. I'm pretty sure. So um, I'm I'm not too too concerned with that. Um, definitely uh, some outlier numbers there. I mean he just got hit around a ton, 332 average. Uh, I don't think that'll happen again. Uh, Javi Gura here who. He wasn't that good for us. He actually started a few games, surprisingly enough. Uh, his This was a, a year where his ERA was better than his FIP. Uh, he's not much of a strikeout guy, so um, you know that usually happens for those type of players. And He was fine. I mean, a high forward FIP. Um, he's basically just a, a decent guy at the back end of our bullpen. And, uh, I mean, not too much more to say about that. He, he's just a fine pitcher for us. Um, Quinn Priester ended up getting some time in September for us, mostly out of the bullpen, although he did uh, get one start where I think he might have been used as an opener. Um, he did strike out many guys, um, you know, not not much of a debut, only 27 innings. He wasn't that great in AAA, but he did improve his numbers throughout the season, so um, next year he probably will start on the rotation. So um, he'll, he'll get a full year under uh, his belt in the rotation. Doug Nelson, uh, he had a, of course had an absolutely fantastic year for us last year. Um, not as good of a season this year, but still um, a good productive starter for us. Um, he definitely had a decent season. He was about actually worth um, this season what he was, and about only 13 starts with us last year. So uh, he was pretty decent. He uh, he walked a lot of guys, so it looks like looks like he had a lot of walk issues, walking about five per nine. Um, definitely not ideal. Um, that definitely um, contributed to his FIP. Because he really didn't get a hit around too much there. Mitch White, uh, his ratings actually tanked a ton this year, which doesn't really make sense to me because he um, pitched pretty decent for us. So I'm not quite sure um, why that happened, but he was decent for us. Um, not too much more to say about that. I mean, he was just a middle-of-the-road reliever. Blake Steederland also kind of middle-of-the-road reliever for us. Uh, 
much more highly rated um, a guy who we have under control for a while so he'll continue to be an organization a lot of these um, bullpen guys that they have will just be in an organization for a long time like Josh Taylor who's just a fine lefty specialist that we have um, you know nothing too special about him of course we acquired him from Boston uh, for um, either Archie Bradley or um, one of our hitters, which I can't think of, or Jacob Stallings. I, I can't remember which one. Mitch Keller, of course, another pretty good season for him. This is about what he is. Um, on a good team, he probably would be a 3 or 4 starter for us. He is the best starter on our team. He always has a, a low 4 ERA. Um, this trip is usually a bit better. It's in the high 3s this year. Uh, so, yeah, a pretty good season. Uh, unexpected season for Mitch Keller. Extension-wise, he's not really looking for anything yet, um, which is fine. I'm not quite sure if I would want to really buy into him long term, but um, you know we'll continue to see. Victor Gonzalez, a guy who got some starts this year, and he's pretty useful. A uh, Swiss Army knife player didn't mean to click on Rocker there, but Gonzalez, decent ratings across the board. Not nothing too special. Um, a good lefty pitches better against lefties than righties, and he's just a good solid player. Um, his ratings are pretty good. Um, doesn't have the best uh, stamina. So he, uh, you know, isn't the guy who you'd prefer to have start, but he can spot start. Um, then again, um, so a good season again from him. Um, Kumar Rocker here, uh, who of course is our um, kind of crown jewel prospect of the organization right now. Um, you know, a guy who we picked uh, first overall in our first draft, and he has progressed nicely. Um, he only pitched about 78 innings, a mid-3 FIP. Um, pretty excellent stuff um, from him. Um, I mean, it, it was a good building block season, you know. Um, that whip is kind of high. Um, he didn't really allow any homers, which was good. I would prefer, of course, for him to strike out a little bit more guys. Um, but in general, I think he was, it was a pretty decent uh, first season for him. Guy who I just realized I forgot to mention, totally skipped over, was Tristan McKenzie, who really did not pitch well as a starter, which kind of, to me, um, just, you know, really looks like that, uh, yeah, I mean, you see his splits here. Over five ERA as a starter. Um, as a reliever, it was under two. Uh, he, he's, he, he's a guy who just can't be a starter. Um, so we we really need to make him a closer full-time. And so from from now on, he'll be coming out of the bullpen. We had a lot of pitching injuries on the rotation where we just kind of needed him to get some starts. He ended up uh, getting up to 16 starts. But uh, he's a guy in the future who that's, uh, they'll just be used solely as a reliever. And uh, as our team gets better... As our pitching gets better, um, we'll, you know, we'll be able to use him uh, solely as a reliever. That's how he should be used. Scott Alexander was money for us. He's just a solid uh, lefty reliever to have. Of course, we got him the Rule 5 draft, and he was pretty good. I mean, he's a lefty specialist, um, a ground ball specialist, and he is just a, a very effective pitcher. And uh, I found out ground ball pitchers are just very effective in this game. Overall, David Bednar, he got some beats in innings, and he was just happened to be uh, the best with us. This season, uh, he tore it up in Triple A's. You can see in 20 innings, he had an ERA of under one, and he was fantastic. So when the opportunity came and a spot was open, I immediately put him into that spot, and he um, pitched very well this season. So I'm um, forward. You know, he's probably a guy who will be in our bullpen. We have a decent amount of pitching depth. Where we have a lot of guys rated like 45 to 50 overall uh, with some with some good stuff and good ratings. So. I mean, those guys will probably be cycled in a lot, uh, in and out a lot in the past, in the next few years. But uh, he's a guy who, you know, he had a good performance, so I'll definitely have him uh, a preference for him to uh, be in the roster next year. And with that said, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the episode. Uh, just, you know, recapping uh, kind of everyone's statistics over the year, letting you know kind of my feelings towards the year. Um, we probably won't really be buying much, just some, um, you know, minimal upgrades, uh, you know, getting some guys up the middle, um, maybe getting another outfielder. Uh, you know, my confidence in Bowers um, went down. Um, we'll, we're going to need a, a second catcher on the Major League roster, um, preferably one who is good at defense. And uh, that's pretty much all I can think of. Maybe look at center field, although I'd, I'd be fine with a Tochi Swaggerty um, platoon for now. And definitely going to make sure Co gets the uh, bulk of the at-bats next season but yeah thank you for watching uh, next episode we're going to get into an off season which you know we're pretty much just waiting the wings um for our, our prospects you know we have um a lot of lower level prospects jared jones is starting to get up there a bit um we have a decent amount of guys who are making their way up through the system jared jones uh, our 
he's going to be ready soon or he's getting uh, close to be ready soon and then the next few years you know we should have uh, Jared Jones, Zion Rose uh, a lot of these guys are going to be coming up soon uh, I'm actually um, probably going to reorganize all this because we, we can't just have all these catchers I'm playing the same level and uh, I kind of let the AI go for it this year and manage the minor leagues usually I try to manage a lot of the pro top prospects I just haven't done that so far this year um, I'm planning on reorganizing the minor leagues um, let me know if you'd like to see a video of me um, reorganizing the minor leagues or doing it in a video. I was probably planning on doing it off camera just because I think, you know, some people might not find, um, you know, this part of the game management um, too interesting. But if, if you do think it would be, um, definitely let me know and I can include it probably in the video where I would kick off the uh, start of the next regular season. So if you do want to see it, um, again, just let me know. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next episode.